Hi, hello. Today I'm gonna show you how to draw and paint clothing with Ibis Paint on our phones. But before we begin, I'd like to thank Galmon for sending me their S830 pen tablet. And this is the pen tablet I'm gonna use for today's video. The tablet has a very unique shape compared to usual tablets and it has drawings on the surface, battery-free pen, cable, manual, and the adapter to connect the tablet to your phone. And oh, it got a little pouch with replacement nibs inside. Oh, a bookmark! Happy time! As I mentioned, this tablet can be connected to your phone with the adapter. The tablet works smoothly and you don't even have to install the driver if you are drawing on your phone. And this is what I'm going to use for this clothing tutorial. And I like how it has buttons that you can set up for shortcuts like undo. So you can just use one hand to draw and do other things while drawing like eating snacks or drink coffee. Thank you so much Gelmon for sending me S830 tablet. If you are looking for starter tablets or any other tablets, go check them out. Now let's get into the video. Alright, first, gravity. Gravity exists. It means that clothes should not float like this. But instead, it hangs from the body parts such as the arm, like my arm fat. But not just the sleeves though, if you see hoodies, especially oversized ones, it usually looks heavier at the bottom and there are these creases and folds leading downwards. Again, this is thanks to gravity. But it also depends on the clothing material. If it is form-fitting like this shirt, it should wrap around the body parts instead of hanging down from it. Next one is tension points. Now I heard this word a lot, but I never really understand what that is exactly. What I know that is tension point is something that causes wrinkles and folds in clothing. For example, the armpit. Like you see how the creases are orbiting around the armpit? Now, tension points depends on your character's pose. If they fold their arms or their legs, then the tension points are going to show in those areas, and the creases are going to form around these tension points. I'm explaining this based on my own understanding of the word tension points, so feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Third one is creases and folds. Without them, the clothes would look like they're made out of jello. Creases and folds come in different shapes and sizes depending on the clothing material and your character's pose. Form-fitting materials will have smaller creases compared to oversized materials. If the character standing still, the clothes will have less creases compared to dynamic poses. So the way I draw creases is by drawing broken diamonds or triangles. It's not always these shapes though, again it all depends on materials and poses. I suggest try breaking down the shapes from your references, but I generally draw these shapes. Okay, now I will show you how I draw clothes. After that, I will show you how I paint clothes. Yes, they are different. When I say drawing, it means like sketching and line arts, and painting is, well, painting. So, drawing the shape of clothes actually depends on the character's pose. You can also draw just the clothing, but I want to draw a character so I will draw the look from Genshin Impact real quick. No specific reason, I just happen to like the look very much. Okay, I just draw a basic pose, nothing too dynamic. As you can see, I just draw a rectangle for the torso, circles for the joints, triangle for his... um nether region, and straight lines for his arms and legs. I usually draw the outline of the clothes first, and then adding the folds later. This way, it still holds the shape of his body. Since the sleeves are rolled up, there will be a lot of creases on it, but the area on the shoulder isn't very affected because it's quite far from the tension point, so I will move the creases down with the liquify tool. As for the torso, as you can see, there's a lot of creases around this area, but when I actually draw it, it looks very untidy, like he's not ironing his shirt for days. So, for drawing or line arting, less is more for me. I will draw more creases on the arm, since there's a clear tension point there, and the torso would be a lot smoother. After that, if you want to create more creases during the coloring, you can go ahead and do so. Alright, let's move on to his pants. As always, draw the outline first, and then draw the creases. As you can see, the hand is inside the pocket, and is kind of pulling the pants fabric, and so is the tie over here. So the creases are mostly in the crotch area. 
I also make this area darker because the darkest shadow usually falls in between the legs. Alright, YouTube, calm down, we're only learning some art here, okay? After that, you can color or screen tone your line art. If you want to learn more about line art and screen tones in Ibis Paint, you can go ahead and watch this video. After watching this video, of course. Alright, let's move on to painting. In the first reference, the soft and hard shadows are not very clear, so I will use this reference to show you how I paint clothes. Let me just sketch another D look real quick. I'm adding the base color with the help of lasso tool, and then I use the paint bucket tool to fill in the base color. Now I will create some soft shadows on the clothing. It might seem like I'm giving the look some pit stains, but trust me, it's worth it. The soft shadows are very important to make the clothes look more 3D and not flat. After that, let's create hard shadows on top of the soft shadows with the lasso tool. You might see me coloring with this technique in the skin painting tutorial. And yes, this technique is quite versatile and you can use it to color almost everything. As you can see in the reference, the creases create this stretchy triangle shape. The darker shadows are placed in the areas with a lot of creases. When coloring, I don't fill the whole section with dark colors because the shadows is actually not flat in clothing. You see this area is really dark, but it becomes lighter at the bottom. It does seem overwhelming to shade clothes at first, that's why it's important to have a reference with you when you're painting. Alright, now I'm going to use this graphite brush to build the shadows even more. I'm using darker color with low opacity brush here, so the shadow is not very harsh but still prominent enough. Keep alternating between the darker and lighter colors so the shadow is not flat. Generally, the closer it is to the tension points, the darker the shadows. By the way, I don't use any blur or smudge tool here. The low opacity brush already acting as a blending brush and it works quite nicely. For the lighting, I'm just gonna use minimal lighting since this clothing material doesn't really reflect a lot of light. After that, I will line art a little bit to add more details to the clothes. Now I will create multiply layer on top of this and use airbrush to darken the shadows. As always, the brushes I'm using are listed down in the description box. I will also add more lights using the add layer. Whoa. Okay, let's reduce the opacity and add soft lighting on the clothes. Alright, now you can change the color of the clothes by going to filter, hue, saturation, and lightness. Or you can also use color balance. Color balance only changes the hue or the colors. They don't change the saturation or lightness of your painting. If you only want to focus on brightness and contrast, go to well, brightness and contrast. You can also experiment with gradients using parallel gradation. You can choose the color combination and also blending mode. This filter will give a lot more color variations to your painting. You can also experiment with many other filters in Ibis Paint. These are just the ones that I like to use. And that is all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out Gaumon. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.